Welcome to Renditor Chronicles Podcast. I'm Ethan Taylor. And I'm Dustin Jelly. Our hope is to inspire new and old hunters alike. We hope you can join us on this journey of lessons that we have, are, and will learn through the world of hunting. 2019 season is here. It's come finally! It is here. So excited. And guess who else is here? Seth, Seth, Seth freaking is here. Taylor. Seth Taylor. And he's going to be with us as much as possible throughout the whole hunting season. We've, he's uh, basically our third uh, host. Yeah, right? we've adopted him as our unofficial third host that everybody loves. Hi, Seth. Hey, I'm here. Oh, I'm he's here. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. Uh, dude. So I know oh, we've man. all been going crazy. I have like four chatting. Group texts, yeah, like that a are happening all the high time. High school dude. girls lately. Yeah. No so, work is getting done. Zero. No hey, work. hey, lots of work is getting done. Um, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> dude. So your season, your season started out. Is that like the first of, uh, the first of September? Is that right? August 31st is oh, our opener yep. at noon, right? High noon. And people noon. just hit the, people just hit the road. So will you tell us, uh, maybe you can get us up to date on your hunts to start since you were the first one hunting out of us three. Yeah. Um, Actually, I would start with scouting a little bit. Uh, I know you guys covered scouting last time, but as far as our hunts go, our hunts have been a little different starting out this year because we kind of did um, a different type of scouting than we usually do. Um, mm. This year, we ended up doing a lot more glassing. Like, uh, you know, as last year, we had that private spot where Emily was hunting and then a bunch of different public spots. Yep, yep. So this year we can't hunt that private spot. So we ended up um, kind of looking for more places to go. And we found a spot that you can actually glass. There's like a, you can glass over. It's kind of laid out where you can actually glass from across the road to it. Yep. yep. So actually this year we've done a lot more glassing and kind of um, like even a couple of days ago, she was out hunting dropped her off and kind of, you know, took the kids to the park, hung out for a while. And then like the last hour of light while she was out hunting, yep. Um, yep. I was driving around glass and looking for deer. So, you know, she had a slow night. It was rough getting in because the wind was supposed to be, you know, out of a certain direction and it turned out not being coming out of that direction. So while she's in the stand, I'm like, Hey, I spotted a few bucks here. If you don't have any action, we'll go here tomorrow. <laughs> So really, like as far as this year goes, um, we've done a ton more glassing um, than last year, and it's been it's been pretty cool. It's been a ton of work, um, just for the fact of like we we're not doing like any preset stands. It's mm, basically nice. like glass or cameras. Yeah, set a stand, hunt it. If there's good deer there, we're gonna stay there and hunt it until we either shoot one or we booger them out of there. And then it's, you know, that to the next spot or to the next spot or to the next spot. So as far nice. as the beginning of this season, it's been going really well because um, we've been seeing a good amount of deer. Um, but uh, it's just been a little different than last year. So, so are you guys, um, are you guys, going good. are you guys, are you guys, um, are you going to one spot and are you staying there or are you, I mean, if you don't see anything, are you, are you staying there? Do you have to see something in order for you to stay there? I mean, you know, cause you're saying not as much preset stands. And so how quickly are you like yeah, burning right now, through an area? Yeah. Right now we're not doing any preset. Um, yeah. So let's see, we started out, I'll give you a kind of a breakdown. We've done 11 hunts. Our first hunt. <laughs> not jealous. <back> <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, our first hunt was actually on a field that we have we were glassing for a couple of months prior to season. Okay. So, like, you know, a lot of consistent buck activity on that field. So what we ended up doing, which was pretty cool, we got a fir- we got to hunt the first, uh, the hunt of the year opener together. So we actually ended up uh, That's walking cute. into this spot. That's really cute. I think it is it cute. It is really cute. So, no, it was miserable. The mis- no, <laughs> yes, this is the I'm one. Not kidding Why you. was it miserable? We were hunting the ground. <laughs> this is what happened: is we we decided we're going to walk into this spot. Once we got three quarters of the way in, 
um, we were going to decide, you know, if we're bumping deer and we just want to stop. And we've been wa- watching them come down this bean field, right? Yep, yep. Well, they come down and pass a spot every night. Um, but if we got a little further up the field, we'd get to where they're actually coming out. So what happened was is we, we walked down that field edge until we got three quarters there and everything was going really good and we're thinking well we actually seen somebody walk into that spot we were going to so when we got three quarters down we kind of just decided you know what we've seen enough hunting pressure in this area so we're just going to go all the way 100 percent in and we actually got in clean without bumping anything we actually had deer coming out the way we walked in once we got set up in these bushes but uh, anyways, that hunt was pretty cool because we got to do it together. And we had a little six point come out and then some does. But uh, the bucks that we've been looking for, they, they didn't end up coming out. But uh, it was pretty cool because going by there now, there's just hunting pressure everywhere. Mm, yeah. And had we gone in like 75% of the way, um, I think we would have looked back and regretted that. And we should have just been like, you know, we should have just got into where they were walking out, you know. So, yeah. So that, so that one, one, that was the one where, if I remember right too, you would, you basically said like, had you not gone in as far as you did right away, you would have regretted, regretted it because of the other hunter, hunter, hunting pressure. Or is that right? I'm pretty right. sure he just said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, he's helping me out. I'm half, I'm half asleep. I'm oh asleep. man. I'm that five something. <laughs> So I'm on a long hitch right now. Okay. So if he wants to, you know, remind me of what I just said, that's just perfectly fine. That gives me a moment to get my brain back together. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Man. He's got my back. Oh, Beautiful. Man. I so, have to do it. I have your back. <laughs> so I've been I've been really excited and, and waiting patiently to hear this uh, story of the stock. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, like you the, put yeah. on that you said it was the best hunt ever. Yeah, and I've been yeah. I've been well, exercising a lot of self control. It actually, yeah, it it was it 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 was really good. Um, okay, so like, and this is kind of, I gotta bring it back to scouting. You yeah, guys yeah. Got your time to talk about your scouting. I I gotta, I gotta give. Yeah, you a yeah. Bit give us the full okay. picture. So, one thing I've been doing a little differently, and we've had conversations on the phone numerous times, Ethan, and you know, Jelly, when we get a chance. Um is you know like making the most of your scouting trip like being kind of being efficient with your scouting you know yep and this year i found that um like bumping deer is not a bad thing Hmm. if you look at like when you're getting into a spot um if you're looking at walking in like this this is how i do it now with scouting and for me now bumping deer is probably the best thing i can do because it eliminates a couple things so if you're walking in like say with the wind in your face which is how i do it now because i want to get to deer yeah bump them and see them visually right so like i was talking with you before like Mm -hmm. so if you're getting into these spots and this has happened a few times this year yeah i i've been scouting on kind of you know windy days that's you know, it's North Dakota. I was saying it's North but Dakota. It's always windy. On, yeah, I've been scouting on these windy days. <laughs> every what I've day. Been doing so, is like, to, uh, every day, but to, Friday. You've been trying to what? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I've i been trying to, you know, go to all these places, you know, where you assume the buck bedding is or where, you know, all these spots that you're supposed to stay out of, right? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, they're going to stay out of, you know, uh, wherever they assume like a buck would be. But this year, what I've been doing is just covering a ton of ground and actually trying to bump them, Hmm. you know. So I was walking into this one spot. Wait, you're trying to bump them or is it a byproduct? I'm confused. You're trying to bump them. Okay. Oh. And this is pre-season scouting. If I'm, Is it pre-season scouting you're talking about right now still? It is pre-season to almost in season okay all right continue continue. so so what i'm doing out there is is i've been realizing a lot of these deer out here 
and I know you guys don't have as much crop field, but a lot of these deer are bedded like right on the crop hmm. or in the crop. Mm. So I've been walking just off the crop and on these fence lines. And the spot where I had this stock that I'm going to tell you about, I ended up bumping a buck. And come to think of it, it was about a month before this hunt. I bumped a buck that was sitting on the corner of this fence line, Mm -hmm. like a lot of them that I have bumped. Yep. And he walked off and he was a big buck and he ran off. Well, I didn't drop a camera. I didn't do any of that. I just, okay, dropped a pin on my Onyx, said, okay, there's a buck in, there was a buck in this corner. Here's the thing about bumping a buck. I believe if you bump a buck once, he considers that his bedding spot worked. Whatever came in didn't kill him. All it did was booger him. So it basically, mm. I got close to him, jumped him about 60 yards, and he took off, right? Yep. Now, yep. I'm assuming if I did that a couple times, two or three times, he would probably just switch his bedding because he doesn't want to be around me or human center. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He thinks yeah. you're hunting him. Yeah. So anyways, like if you bump him once, it seems to me from what I've seen over the last three or four years, I've bumped bucks out of the same bed. Hmm. Uh, in one spot I've bumped in one spot I've bumped a buck out of the same bed like three years and then another spot I've done it tw- two years in a row. Like the identical bed. Hmm. So anyways, this hmm. is a month before this is a month before season. So I bump them out of this bed and I look around And uh, I had been looking for, like, buck sign. I found a ton of beds, but I didn't find, like, you know, the rub and the beds in the right spot. I just found beds in general. So I kind of assumed it was doe bedding. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I jump them off this corner. I take note of it, and I think to myself, self, come back here. (laughs) You literally thought, okay. Oh, dude, my brain. (laughs) (laughs) Dude. Self? Terrible. I wake up I, do, I wake up in the morning and it's like, okay, what's the wind going to be? Okay. What spot would I be in if I was hunting right now? It just every day all day is bad. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we text a lot. You get it. I mean, it's it's bad. Anyways, and you got a bit of it. I seen of it. You know, I seen this. Okay. So anyways, we'll get to opener. Opener I go out with Emily next day. I get a good win for that spot to uh, go in. And I wasn't really intending on ground hunting. Yeah. Like I texted you guys or whatever I did. And hey. I was like, should I go in, stand on the back or should I, you know, you know, just go in and just be on the ground. I just, I didn't know. Cause I'd never hunted that spot. All I did was walk through there, you know, mm-hmm. and jump that buck. Well, one thing, that we've talked about too is like scouting is all great and wonderful building up to opening day. But what, what's going on is like those deer are doing what they're doing, like say on your trail cameras or if you're glassing them or whatever, they're doing that while you're not there. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you get in there and you start mixing it up, it that what you caught on that camera or what you're seeing glassing that may not be occurring anymore. So when I go in and say, I'm going to clank a stand up in a tree or I'm going to cause a bunch of whatever getting in there, I don't know if the deer are going to do the same thing. So basically what it came down to is I wanted to disturb it as very little as possible Mm -hmm. and just to see if he would be in that bed. Like if I didn't get in there and possibly clank a stand or whatever, you know what I mean? You never know what deer you're bumping. So I just decided it was kind of windy, get the wind in my face and just walk in there. So what ended up happening is I get in there and I'm about 200 yards and I decided ahead of time when I'm going to slow down and when I'm going to start kind of just picking things apart with um, my binoculars. And that was about 200 yards from where that that deer was bedded Hmm. a month ago, right? So I come through the woods with the wind in my face. I get out there. And I'm just kind of standing on a fence line and I'm looking down with my binoculars, nothing, nothing. I'm trying to look to where his bed would be roughly to see if there's any horns, nothing there. Um, and I look out in the field and all I can see is about from his bottom jaw, so like his nose and the bottom of his mouth, and then just his crown. 
Oh. And I'm like, holy cow. Dude. This, deer, dude. this deer is standing right there in all of his glory. I mean, his brows, like, yes. his brows were as long as his G2s. <clears throat> and I'm like, my first thought was, well, my first thought was, holy cow. Like, <laughs> that seems like a reasonable thought, response. Like, no, my second thought was, holy cow. A month ago, he was five yards to the left of there in that bed when I jumped him. Hmm. And see, I've done this the last three years where I've jumped bucks out of the same bed. But each time you do it, you become more of a believer in it. Hmm. Like, hmm. and I think you guys will understand and see more, like, the more you uh, are in the woods and the more you're jumping deer, or the more, like, you're spooking deer or whatever. Whenever you're around deer, whatever. I'm being more convinced each time I get out and intentionally hunt a buck bed as if there's a deer there. And I just, I, it, I get more confident, <sighs> you know, and like that deer being in that bed was like the second thing on my, my mind, right after seeing his rack, I was like, Holy cow, another deer right where I saw him last. Like, and it just like it's actually mind. turning out like where your mind's at with it. Dude, like, I was like, as your approach. I, I thought to myself, he's probably going to be in that bed. And what I did is I slowed down and I hunted like he was in that bed. And mm. had I taken like literally 10 more steps and come up over that hill, he would have been gone. But since I treated that bed, this is going to sound silly, but <laughs> since I treated that bed with the respect of the buck was <laughs> going to be silly. there. Seriously. Yeah. It, it turned out because I slowed down and I glassed right then and there as soon as I could see possibly where his antlers would be in that, that bed yeah. is why I picked him up. Anyways. That's that, that has got to be like so reassuring. And like, like you said, like it that is. confidence builder to that. Oh, that'd be sweet. Well, you, well, and you hear about it and I've listened to these podcasts and you know, different bud or uh, buck bed hunters and this is how you do it and all that other stuff. Yeah. But until yeah. you get out there and you literally start jumping those deer out of their bed and then coming back to that same bed to see if they're there. Mm -hmm. See, like when I was when I was younger and I'm sure when you guys were younger too, and we've talked about it before, you think there's that deer are so random. Like you get in a tree and you're just assuming like I'm gonna catch this random movement. Yeah. And you sit that yeah. tree over and over again because you think this random movement's coming, right? Yep. Well, I could yep. probably sit maybe even a hundred, two hundred yards down from where that buck beds, and I may never see him. You know? Yeah. Well, because the thing is, too, is like five yards from where he was bedded. Yeah, and the thing is, is like we're looking for random movement, but also looking back, yeah. we were randomly hunting. You like know. we weren't, there's no like rhyme or reason to what we were doing. So, so I guess my, my one question is Seth, I mean, I'll say, I don't have any experience being out West. Uh, well, yep. when I say West, you know, like North Dakota, <laughs> something where <laughs> Anything it's not outside, Ohio, uh, any yeah, outside of, you know, Wisconsin, down Minnesota. Under. Yeah. Down under. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Okie dokie. Do you, <laughs> do you find do it, it? I guess my, well, my thing is it's it's hard i mean maybe it's just a lack of time in the woods and time spent going after these deer that i haven't seen it but do you feel like being out in north dakota where you have a lot less wood and a lot more um crops and farmland where you are just able to see a lot more like if you do bump something that is 50 60 yards for you where it is open they can take off versus like ether and i where we are in you know thick cover where if we're bumping something 50, 60, 70 yards away, we're not seeing it. Oh my gosh, dude. I, mean, I can, I mean, I barely, you, I was, I was out walking the other day yeah. and it was like 30 yards and all I see is a flash Yeah, at 30 yards. I mean, I see it's like, it. Oh, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, I mean, I guess maybe what I'm asking is like when you do bump, how far away in average would you say you are from these deer that you're bumping? Um, it all depends. Like you said, I will say straight off the bat, um, it's, I hate to take credit away from myself, but it's way easier hunting here than it is in Wisconsin. And I'm just going to throw that out. There. I, I appreciate but your it, honesty. That's, that's, uh, it just, so good. It, really, it is. It, it's a lot easier. You can see, um, 
there's a lot more landscape where you can glass, put it that way. Yeah. Um, I do hunt areas where, you know, it's coolies and stuff. And when I'm jumping, when I'm jumping these deer, sometimes it's in these coolies. Um, but other times, like the buck I'm talking about right now, um, I was probably 60 yards away from where he was bedded. And he was bedded in some fallen down um, trees hmm. right on the edge of a field, hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I would say, number one, yeah, if there's less trees, you're probably going to see more. Yeah. Um, but number two, I think a lesson that we all could learn and that I am actually, like, this year is the first year I've really been implementing it, is get that wind in your face mm-hmm. and go, like, we love to cover ground, right? But it's like, let's cover ground the right way. Let's cover it at the best advantage for us. Ethan and, Ethan and I were talking before, like, that one sighting of that buck, yeah, I didn't need to set up a trail cam to know if there was a buck in the area. I didn't need to set up a trail camera to know where he bed, to know his movement. Because what I'm doing out here is I'm finding as many bucks as I can in an area. Yep. And then I'm going after them in that general area mm. is what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, and I'm basing, and we talked about this too, I'm basing my hunt off of my first hunt. So, like, when I came in there and I put that stock on the deer, so I can get back to the the story. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) when I put that stock on that deer, since that deer was there, I am coming back to that spot. Yep. Yeah. Until I don't see what I want to kill in that spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another spot that I've either bumped a buck or had him on camera. But, yeah, like, one thing – one thing Ethan and I were talking about before was visual, like getting a visual on a deer when you're scouting. It, you know, it goes back to efficiency. Like you may not need to put a camera there and come back and check it and all these other things because you saw them there. And I completely a hundred percent believe that if you bump a buck once, he's not, he's not done out of the area because yeah. he's bedded there with the intent of getting bumped and getting out of that bed like that's why he's there right because it's 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 still offering safety because it's not right it's not happening often and it's it is providing like you said the information it needs to stay alive yep yep that's that's that yeah and that and that too even last year like going into um going into that last season i went in like we did and we've talked about it before where i went in and it was like i saw a deer that i was like oh this is something i'm definitely willing to to kill so i'm not even gonna leave anything that would um you know have a chance of showing more of my hand so to speak as far as like leaving scent or leaving a trail camera it's like i already know what i need to know like they're in this area and so now it's up to me to hunt it right yeah and i think we hear and we've heard i mean i don't know maybe it's just the podcast i specifically listen to um but I never heard growing up like the importance of first sit. And now I, I can't get a, I can't do a sit unless it's my second sit on some place I've already seen hmm. something I want to shoot and or ridiculous deer movement where I think something I want to shoot is going to come out possibly the next night or something. You know what I mean? So like, I don't, I was I was gonna say that's uh you know I've been watching the the hunting publics uh, North Dakota videos, and it seems like sure. that's a Get that's out a. Of my state. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, but I've I've literally met four different. Or I've seen Dude, four yeah, we no, we talked about the one guy who was actually you ran into oh. the DIY. Um, Dude, you ran into the DIY. Oh. Okay, sort of, full, sort so of. so funny story. Okay, t- t- did you actually meet him? I think I did. I, yeah, yeah. Dude, so here, here's the, here's how small of a world it is. So DIY sportsman, I actually heard about him through one of my old coworkers, Kenny Schofield, who he actually, he's friends with DIY Hunter and went to college with him. And he told me about this guy. So I found out about this guy, DIY Hunter, Garrett Prawl, um, a few years ago, but what's that? Find out about me. So I found out about you. Well, 
I won't tell you how I found out about you. Oh That's, my gosh. That, that will remain That's a deep cut. unspoken That's a deep cut. on the interwebs. I don't. I think multiple parties would like me to re- have that remain anonymous. Oh <laughs> uh, moving on. So uh, you met DIY Sportsman. That's great. How'd you meet him? Oh my gosh! He was sitting in a spot a mile in, rattled from a mile in from you. Yeah, we literally walked no in. We're like, way. surely no one will be here. Oh and my so gosh! And so we think and walked in there, and we walked straight up to this field, like. Straight in, straight up, and right into him. And he comes running back from the fence. Hey, yeah, where are you setting up? And I was like, not there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just I shook his hand. I was like, good luck. We'll go down from you or whatever. Because we were going to go over to the corner of this spot, but that would have been upwind from them, so it would have screwed up their hunt. But Man, that is, that is crazy that you ran into. I think it... I did. It looked like him. I I described I described his truck because I was like, hey, uh, I was like, I forget how we even like made, started making connections. Yeah, but he had like the. I was like, yeah, he drives this truck because I had just seen it in the video. Yeah. I was literally watching the video when you called, and I was like, oh yeah, just watching DIY. He's in North Dakota, and you're like, oh, does he have a bull blood? Like maybe does he have <laughs> oh this like gosh. facial hair? Yep. Does he have? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you ran so, into him. So so we're awesome. doing a podcast right now. I'm actually I'm recording a video right now. We're doing a podcast. With Seth Taylor in North Dakota, who ran into Garrett Prawl, aka DIY Sportsman. I might have. You I might have run into him. I'm pretty sure he did. I mean, that's a small world. It so is. It's tiny. Where <laughs> where was this? T- where were you? He uh, can't tell where he, he was. He can't tell. I know. Have yeah. you seen and the Garrett, box he's chasing? No, I know. Yeah, I saw it. Garrett got one. <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't say it's one of the ones Seth's chasing. Oh, man. But what a small world. That is a small world. In. <laughs> oh my gosh! What were we talking about? We were here? supposed to be talking, we were about, your talking epic about your epic, your epic stock, your epic slash, stock that we've yeah. we've yeah, gone down the rabbit man. hole on. Well, y'all, I'll just go back to the stock. <laughs> anyway, so I ended up, I ended up crawling up to to where this deer was probably going to be like sixty yards away from me, and another buck had come out in the field. So it just made it worse because he came even closer than the first buck. So I was like pretty much belly crawling up to this bush and i thought you know once i get up to this bush it'll be between me and the buck in the field and me and the buck in the corner of the field that i was going after so i'm creeping up creeping up and i'm like finally like i can stand up behind this bush because nothing can see me right so i stand up and i'm glassing i can't see him and i take one step towards this bush and thinking Oh, <laughs> this deer was literally like busted, five, dude. Five to six yards on the other side of this bush, and just takes off. No, and I didn't. He was literally <laughs> on the other side of the bush. Oh, my. oh, and that's the one you glassed, right? Like you were. That was like the one you were that moving was the one in I on. Glassed. Oh my no gosh! Way. What happened was, is I lost sight of him, and he had walked toward me sixty yards. Ah. Oh. So, brutal. Anyway, but that's that's not the best part. I mean, that is the best part. <laughs> but the cool part is, is so what I did is I think it, I just stood in that bush on the corner of that field, and I seen that buck came out again, but he came out later on down the field, and he actually walked back to that corner, and I had hmm. him at like sixty yards. So he didn't really. Um, he, he was just semi spooked, not like a full out, like I saw danger. And took I had off. the wind in my favor. What happened was, is I took a long step to step into this bed that was right beside the bush. It was dead calm, guys. Like when I was crawling, like you could hear every blade of grass move. If you would have dropped a leaf on that grass, you could have heard it hit. Dude, the it's those sick of pants. You told me how loud they were. I bet that was the problem. Dude, you should have went with no pants. No pants. No oh, pants. God. No I pants, had, Taylor. I went with no pants. Yeah, loincloth. Like, Just strip loincloth. Yeah, Get in touch no. with your. Any, anyway, I stood by that bush and I seen like five different bucks and a whole bunch of different does. Oh my gosh. How, uh, how long were you at that field, bush? It was, it was phenomenal. What? How long were you sitting there? like three hours oh my gosh that's wow. legit so, i was like 10 yards away from some of these deer and what's funny is and another thing i've been learning this year 
is about thermal. I've never had to like deal with them before, right? Yep. And the night before, I had hunted a stand, and these thermals, I'd never really had a lot of interaction with them. And this, I had this northeast wind like in my face, and it was going out to the field. Well, these, as soon as it that sun started going down, like they started pulling back to where the wind was coming from, and I'm going, what's going on here? Mm. I knew that thermals, you know, they pulled some, but I'm talking, it looked like a sinking 10 mile an hour wind, just you know, taking that milkweed back down, like the opposite the direction of where it was. Yeah, so wow. what happened? That's yeah, crazy. What happened on that stock, and what happened with all those deer, is the same thing with the thermals happened except it was pulling it back away from the field the you know so it was actually good the second time and the first time it was terrible so the it was first time like, it was getting it was you. cool <laughs> using unintentionally used it to my advantage the second time. <laughs> at least you're honest but yeah no at it least was you're awesome honest hunt. it was one of the funnest hunts i've had and i'm just like i'm so pumped i didn't go in and try and set up a stand well what made because it like what I, what was it about that hunt i mean because obviously you've had some pretty epic hunts with the deer you've put on the ground like what was it about that hunt like what would you say is like the main thing that made it so good i think i think it's the same as the first hunt emily and i did we made a decision to like go in and just go for it you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, mm. I, I was trying to make that decision and it's like, everybody does it. They walk like to the spot they want to set up. And then the spot is not what they think. And then you stand there and you're now you're sweating and you're looking at your phone and you're looking at your Onyx and you're going, where should I go? Where should I go? Where should I go? I'm wasting time. Dude, All these other things. The opener. Uh, I know that feeling. So, so it, 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 it should do that, but I'm, what happened was is like i even talked to you guys and it was like i don't know whether to go stand or ground it's like if i get into the first time i get up in a stand i'm gonna be able to probably have a better vantage point on deer see more deer you know be better set up more information for my next hunt but then i was kind of like what would be more fun dude like, dude totally. dude fuck or setting up a stand and, and that's what i think is like changing so much like with what even like what uh, with us three talking or whatever going into this year mm -hmm. it's like what's changing for me so much is like figuring out what kind of hunt i want and like mm -hmm. and like yeah like it's just not like it's not defaulted to the stand anymore yeah. and i think for right. however i mean rifle season that's all it was was like go on the stand and then like last year was like the only option was going in the stand and then this year, like I'll share my story a little bit later, but like the, op it's a legitimate option to just be like, all right, I'm going to be on the ground today. Yo. You know what I mean? And it, yep. and it's the re part, big part of that is like you, there's so much fulfillment in like doing that and like being like, Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Like I'm following my gut. I'm following like my heart. Just following in your heart. Oh <laughs> well, and too, when you're going in on the ground, especially first time in, it's like those deer, if you get in there right, like with that wind in your face and you're taking your time and you're on the ground, those deer are doing what they always do. And you're like, you're getting in there and you haven't already been in there and set a stand and put your scent in there. I mean, I saw a deer, what was it? My second sit out, my first sit by myself. I saw a doe hit my, like my ground scent and yeah. jumped four feet backward. Right. Jeez. That's you and might so, need to take a shower. And that, was, and that was my very first time in, right? So I'm thinking, you know, all these times that we go out, we preset a stand. How many deer are hitting our ground set and jumping four feet back? Yeah, that's a that's good point. That's what I love about the idea of, like, walking into a spot and hunting then and there. That's you so know? awesome. Yeah, that is crazy. That's so, oh, man. It's true. Like, Dude, it's so true. There's, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think, uh, like you even said, like what's going to be even more fun for you too. And like moving in an area with like, I think a big part of it too, is like actually having some expectation of where the deer are and like having that kind of information to where you can make a pretty good judgment call on it to where it's not like we're randomly hunting or let's hope they walk by here today. It's like, I'm going in with the expectation that they're here. And if they are here in that way, I can hunt it this way or this way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can adjust your, yep. your game plan to that. I think that's, that's awesome. That's super cool. 
Have you had any other hunts since then that you feel like are, are notable or you're like that had some uh, uniqueness maybe to it for you? Oh, let me think. I went out with Emily. What was it? Our second hunt was pretty cool. Both our hunts. Anytime we get to go out together, it's pretty memorable. I just yeah, it's fun going out. But we were pretty fortunate. Um, our first hunt was really cool because we were on the ground. We almost died from mosquito <laughs> bites and blood loss. They but, had to go and get so like. That, dude, we got done with that and we were walking out and we were like, that was the funnest, most horrible, miserable. Yeah, it's type two fun, buddy. Nice. That's awesome. The plan worked out perfect. And we got in there and like. We went 100% of the way in where we saw the bucks coming out to the field, not down from there, and we did it flawlessly. And that, when we sat, when we got there, I even told her, I was like, the fact that we got in here and didn't booger this valley, I'm counting it as a win. Nice. I was like, if if we get, yeah, I was like, I'm counting it as a win. I told her before we started walking in, I was like, if we don't push a bunch of does a bunch, or anything else out of this as we're trying to get in, like, it's going to be good. Victory. And just that coming together was, it was rewarding just getting in there. Yeah. I just loved it. Nice. But our second hunt, we saw a real nice eight pointer and he was like 60 yards away and we had some does and stuff. Um, that was a cool hunt just because she spotted him first and she always spots the deer first actually. Um, but she spotted him and he was going to come in and we didn't know, but then he was directly downwind. And then she was deciding whether she was going to shoot him. And you can hear me on camera going, uh, trying to explain to her, Oh, it'd be so cool. And then she would be like, Oh, well, don't try and convince me. And I'd be like, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it'd be so cool to have it on this phone. And he's pretty nice. Oh, he's pretty nice, but I don't know if I'm ready to tag out right now. <laughs> I'm just like, well, it's up to you, baby. You know, oh whatever gosh. you want to do. That's like, so cute. Dude, no, that's it, awesome. It that's super so funny. Fun. And then yeah. he went the other way, and then we didn't have to. You You're know, like, I guess we, we don't have, have to decide. decide. Yeah, I don't know, no. man. 60 yards, full send. Why not? Just kidding. <laughs> Dude, I'm not. Yeah. No, as far as memorable hunts, I did. I have one deer that I've fallen head over heels for, and I'm like breaking my own <laughs> rules here. Oh, I'm serious. Boy. It's terrible. We don't it's, want no drama. No. Okay, go ahead. Good. I don't know. Like hunting. Here's the deal. I've never hunted a specific deer. I've never like had a deer and broken it down and like strategically tried to kill him by hunting different spots and whatever. I put out trail cameras, oh, whatever, but I haven't you know, tried to figure out his movements and stuff like that. No, I no. Hope that he'd show up. No, we call that. What? Leveling up, uh -huh. you just you just Dude. took the game to the next level. Leveling Dude, up. Let me tell you how. Let me let me tell you how you know you've leveled up. Okay. Oh, oh boy, yeah, here comes the truth bomb. No, I'm sure, no, but no, this is when you go to a spot and you don't see a deer and you count it as a win because you didn't blow anything out. And let me explain that. Oh, this man. deer that I'm hunting is in a 90 acre block of woods, right? Yeah. And he's been in there for the last three years for sure. I'm sure probably before that too. And what I'm doing right now is I'm hunting probably six major exits of that, of that block of timber, right? Yeah. Yep. Where I assume he's gonna, he's gonna um, exit out in the evening, like to go feed, right? Yeah. So if I can manage to hunt each of those exits without blowing him out of there or without like, you know, boogering up the area until I hopefully hit the exit he's on when I don't disturb it. I count it as a win. Hmm. Like a hundred percent. I got into this spot. It was wet. It was rainy wind in my face. I got in there. I didn't see a deer, but I was, it's terrible. I must be a nub. I was so yeah, close. Yeah, he's, he is. I was so close to that deer, I could smell it. 
I just didn't see them. <laughs> and so I, I'm not kidding. It's bad. But what? no, I'm serious. When you do, you'll experience it someday. Well, like, if, if if we're going off that, then I'm like next level expert hunter because oh I have God. never spooked any deer. <laughs> like I am amazing at not spooking deer. He's just so loud so early on that he's never close enough to see the deer he's spooking. Let's be honest. Okay, maybe maybe that's the, the truth. Deer. Maybe you should go back to that compound so you can shoot 90 yards. <laughs> no, but right now I'm telling you, it's process of elimination. And like I said, you got to have to assume. Party foul. To... We're good. Continue Uh-oh. on. The show must what go happened? on. Keep going. Sure. You're good. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is like when you get to hunt a specific deer, um, sometimes it's process of elimination. It's not you seeing the deer. It's you not seeing the deer. If that makes sense, which it should, because if you don't see them out in this field in the evenings and you've been by that field six times, what does that tell you? He's not feeding in that field, at least not in daylight. So you're not going to hunt that field, right? Yeah. Or at least the trail to that field. Hmm. So that's basically what I've broken this deer down to right now is I haven't been able to find them in different surrounding fields where a buck should be. We've seen plenty of big bucks out feeding in fields in the evenings, but he hasn't showed. So now it's literally this timber, a process of elimination. And I, I had seen him bedded earlier in the spring um, on the south side of this timber and then on the north side of the timber. So I know as best a person can know um, that he's in there. I just I'm trying to narrow it down right now. Yeah. Nice. So, well, it, you, it does, it does sound like you're in love. I mean, it sounds like you're completely obsessed. You're all, you've lost all reason. Yep. <laughs> I should quit. You just should quit now. You're, 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 you're justifying every move. You're not seeing any deer and calling it a win. Nope. I mean, you've, you've completely lost yeah. it. <laughs> you're not seeing any deer. No, but it's true. Dude, I did not want to see a bunch of does walk out of where I was sitting there. I would love to because see Because if a, a bunch of does walk out of there in front of me, eventually they're going to get down Windy View with how that trail set up. So I didn't want to see any does. I didn't want to see anything about that, but that buck. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. You know? Dude, that's, but anyway, that's pretty awesome. And I did show the ultimate self-control. I got a camera soaking there for the last three months, and it was only 150 yards away. But that's the next spot I'm going to go sit when I get the northwest wind. Yep. So I literally, yeah, nice. against all... Everything, everything in you, side you was like, want to see that deer on camera. go look at the know. pictures. So checking a trail camera is as good as a sit, and I wasn't prepared to to do that mm, wow that is act, that's actually impressive I, that's that's, you. i'm not there yet and i'll just say that that's true oh. yep i am no problem admitting that that i'm like oh I'll, I'll go grab pull a card and sit in my stand and scroll <laughs> Dude, <that's laughs> i'm like i'm sending you guys his pics while i'm in yeah. the stand where i'm hunting those same deer it's like oh wait a second wait a minute that's the trail he's supposed to walk in on and i just grabbed my camera Darn it. <laughs> yep Guilty. It was, wasn't it, Ethan? Oh, it was absolutely, dude. Yeah, Ethan's a camera guy. I was he in the, no, here, what's on in the my camera. defense. Here's the only thing I'll say in my defense, and it's not that good of a defense, so I will own that on the front side of this. <laughs> in my defense, I went over and I was like, and "This is my, how I justified in my head." I'm like, "I should go see if there's a good tree to sit in over there." And while I was over there, <laughs> may as well pull the card up. Oh, no tree, better head back. Wow. So yeah, bad. yeah, it was bad. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that may have. You could have pulled it. Hey, you could have pulled it when you got down. <laughs> yeah, could have, could have. Uh, but you would have had nothing to do in your deer stand. Oh. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to look at 283 photos. <laughs> Oh man, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous of your uh, your experiences, though you are a couple of weeks ahead of us in time spent in that's, the field. That's true. So, we got to put that in perspective. Our weekend only opened up this last this last weekend, so which yeah, well, that's part of like I, we should probably mention like that is part of why we're releasing this podcast late is because we want to we, we want to do well. We are busy and we want to like give the most up to date podcast field. instead of being like a month recording yeah. in a month or two weeks ahead of time we're gonna try but our best to like have actual like up to yep. date through the season Where most people most cool people do youtube videos of their hunts <sighs> we do we drop a podcast yeah well we try to so we're, <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll go with. this is where we're at yep 
Um, so who's going to share the next story? Who's got the next one? You or well, me? Well, I want to share, but I feel like Dude, naturally the order per... Okay, I'll go ahead. So After you've done busting my no deer chop, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Ethan, you got out Saturday, opening day. Which, I sure did. Which, which, which I, I wanted to, but last year, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I agreed to officiate a wedding for a couple from work. Not, when, when last not, year, like before you and I were, yeah, doing before this. you and I, like uh, literally a year ago, last yeah. fall, they asked me so, and not not thinking about the dates ahead of time, um, I clearly I, I booked myself for opening day. So what, whatever, it wasn't that great of weather, so that's the justification I have to tell myself. But so I ended up getting out the second day, opening, oh, opening, uh, um, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Um, had church in the morning and then Sunday afternoon decided to head on out to the woods. And I had been debating of where I was going and it was kind of nailed down to two spots. Um, either go to the spot where I had set up a trail cam um, and pulled some pictures of, of deer coming into a field, a private field just south of where I'd be hunting. Or based off the wind, I was going to go check out this this little block of, of public land that I hadn't been able to scout, but was it looked really good because from from what I found e scouting, there was a nice um, on the like literally the south end. There's a public field or a private field just to the south of it, and there's a wood line runs along the south line, and it comes to a point, and then there's an island like 150, 170 yards just north of the wood line, and then it's kind of open. And then on the north end, there's a nice little like creek river. And some more woods. And there's the neighbor's cow. <laughs> Pretty there's much. Pretty, there's, there's 14 squirrels. Pretty <laughs> much. <There's... laughs> so he, you, ba- you basically just Bob Rost verbally for us. So I appreciate yeah, that. There's, 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 a there's, there's a little, happy there's a little happy cloud over <laughs> here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm with you. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you feel the painting that I'm this painting? This is good. This I is beautiful. <laughs> Good. Okay. Keep going. Oh man! So on this happy cloud that I was on, oh I decided, you know, I'm gonna base off the wind. It was a kind of a southwest wind in Sunday afternoon. I'm like, well, this is gonna be a good chance to hit this area, and so I went in, um, not knowing what I was gonna find, and I figured I, I went in there early, early Sunday afternoon. I figured I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of start on the north end, work my way east to west, and hit. This little creek slash river, whatever it was, and then work down uh, south to the south end, and then go set up um, some point between the island and the field. Well, I get there, and right away there is this kind of a it's it's a logging area mm-hmm. of public land, and there's this old clear cut, and there's this deer trail. I mean, a nice strong deer trail running down, kind of the north end. I'm like, well, I'm parking here. I'm walking in here. And I end up walking down that, and uh, right away I'm finding tons of of bedding um, along this clear cut, um, and so I just keep walking, and I walk in about a half mile, and I end up going through heavy stuff and getting to where this creek slash kind of swampy area was, and 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 in there I started finding um, just a ton, a ton of sign. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're like trails coming down into the water. And so get... did you have your did you have your ghillie on? I did it. No, I did not. Backpack I had it in my backpack. Huge I was, mistake. Huge I was, mistake. I was not walking through Are the woods you with that thing. Are at all? I would have been caught in the first, br- you know, you, little brush. And did you bring in a stand, or was it just a ground hunt? I was just a ground hunt. I went in. I brought okay. in uh, a backpack with my ghillie suit and you know, other supplies, and then just one climbing stick. So that way, if I wanted to, I could get up a little ways into a tree and and sure. be able to observe over whatever brush. Um, right. Just going straight ground. Just kind of want it. It was kind of a, more of a scout slash hunt in case I did find anything good. Right. So I get in. I hike all the way to the west and hit this this creek, which then leads to kind of a beaver pond. And towards the beaver pond, I end up finding these really strong trails coming out of the woods from the west going east. And and if you keep going on this, this chunk of property, you cross the creek, and there's a little wood line, and then, I don't know, a couple hundred yards away, it leads into another private field. Well, I didn't cross the creek. 
Uh, but I ended up finding lots of a lot of um, sign, lots of trails kind of running through this area. Again, lots of bedding going out, and found a really really strong trail. I actually ended up finding what I believe, uh, and one of the trails was some some bear poop. Fun, yeah, oh, f- fun. I, which I, which I realized <laughs> afterwards because I'm like that's interesting. No, it might have been buck poop. It might have been buck poop. <laughs> it, this, <laughs> Guys, buck poop and broadhead. Oh my gosh! I, I, I will send you guys the picture later. This was not buck poop. Next, was... next title: buck poop and broadhead. <laughs> yes, I, I like Go ahead, it. Dusty. Go ahead. Uh, so that that was just interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, so I ended up kind of kind of skirting around this this um, beaver pond, and ended up finding a another trail and so i'm like well i'm just gonna follow this trail and this trail actually ends up leading me in and into an area where there's a bunch of white pines or not white pines on um, white oaks yeah ooh. and so i was like ooh. ooh and 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 the whole way i mean there's there's like probably some of the most amount of rubs i've ever seen oh so i was just i mean they're they're old you know did you plus. notice if they were dropping at all or did you they see, were not did, dropping okay yeah. right. was were they in the trees at that point did you see anything or no, no i didn't okay. even see anything so okay. it didn't look like they were sure it was a white oak yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was called google <laughs> nice yes i verified yeah, so he had service okay so had, go yeah, on barely barely had service <laughs> um and so, but and it's I like, almost called the hunt on account of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. I don't know what to do without Google. Oh I my gosh. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> the deer walks up. Where should I shoot it? If it's quartering <laughs> two or away, uh, you might be a city at if. Yeah. Someone uh. send me some deer pins. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait, I did ask for that. Nobody sent me any. Yeah, it was no, just so disappointing. No, no one wanted so to. Anyhow, we I tried. We tried. <laughs> I, I try, so I keep going along this trail, and then at one point, and by the way, as I'm going out, oh, at the beginning, I end up co- coming across this big old uh, clear cut area field, and I end up seeing two illegal homemade box stands set up in the trees. So instantly, I'm like burn them. Oh, well. <laughs> This is definitely, I mean, it was definitely an area for rifle hunting. So I'm like, I'm good. I'm not worried about bow hunters right now. So rifle season, this is no bueno. They're like elevated cabins. Yeah, pretty I'm much. sure it wasn't rifle season. If they're going to leave a stand there, <laughs> you never know. You know, you never know. It's middle of Minnesota redneck area. So mm. I didn't see anybody in there. Nobody shot at me. So I figured <laughs> we were good to go. <laughs> if I'm not getting shot at. It, it's safe. So... So I ended up following this trail once I was in the woods and coming across those white oaks and then continue a little long, a little further and boom, what do I run into? Another stand. Um, and so. So you're feeling super encouraged at this I'm, point. You're like, I mean, I'm in the right area. I felt area. conflicted. At this point. I mean, I did feel like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stand options st- at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuff moving along here. If you were stand hunting, you'd be killing it. Oh, I'd be. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, I would have been three for three that day. It was great. Um, some real trophies. Some real trophy stands. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't even move. Nope. So I, I didn't really know how to feel about that. I'm like, well, I'm going to keep following these trails. Just see where they lead. See if I can find some bedding. Um, so I followed the trails. I ended up getting the trail. It seemed like it ended in it or I got lost. Um, and so I ended up just like bushwhacking it through the trees. Uh, kind of that by that point, I was on the far west end of the public land. I ended up coming then headed south and hit kind of this wide open clear cut slash swampy area. I don't know. It was, it was really, it was just straight up wide open. So I made my way towards. The far south end, which butted up against some uh, private fields, which I had really been targeting as like, oh, I want to go check this area out because there's this there's this like island of big mature trees about 150, 170 yards north of this field. <laughs> yeah, there's mature, this funnel. Big mature trees. Are you going to shoot one? I was going to shoot a mature tree. <laughs> I thought there could be a good size stand in these trees. They yeah, that's like what I was after. Yes. Oh, finding yes. these stands. Big mature white oak. Just uh, stump shooting. Okay, all right, go on. All right, God damn stump it. shooting I is just, actually a thing with trees. Hours, I know man. it is. They didn't even use the trees. Oh man, can <laughs> okay. I can I can I continue? Yeah, I just want to make sure oh, we were. Thank you. Okay, all right, go on. 
So uh, my f- my thought was, hey, there's this great island. It looks like there's this natural funnel from the island to the field. Um, I'm going to go check this area out. Well, what I ended up finding was this big section of the trees running from kind of west to east or east to west uh, in between kind of that island of, of tr- like pine trees that you could see on from east scouting in the field. Well, it had been clear cut, I would say, probably three, four years ago. Uh huh. So there's a bunch of saplings that had grown up that were, you know, 10 feet tall. Yeah. In between, which is really annoying. I hate saplings. <laughs> I utterly hate saplings. Oh my gosh. But so you I. You can't put a tree stand in. You can. <laughs> right. Well, I, I wasn't going tree stand you can't hunting, hunt so. A tree stand in a sapling. <laughs> yeah. You can't even ground hunt in those suckers. It's so <laughs> annoying. Um, and so I ended up finding kind of a, what I thought was a trail, um, or at least kind of the clearest path. And it looked like I'm trying to figure out where the deer might be coming from. And at this point it was, it was late enough in the afternoon. It was like, well, it's too late for me to kind of backtrack and head up North to the area where I had seen all this, this activity and trails and markings. So I'm going to stay here and see if we get any activity coming through this did you this, have sign or no nah very little i mean it, it the little bit of sign i had was this is the kind of the trail this is the most natural pathway for the deer to travel from that island to the field if they go there did I, you did you feel like it was one of those things because i've done this before too where it's like this is the right place for deer to be they should be here therefore i'm gonna you know what i mean like it's yeah. not it's not so much like there's actual deer sign it's just like this is yeah. perfect for a buck and then it's like, it there's was, no deer. I, I, mean, I was, I was okay with, I was going to shoot whatever came by. Uh huh. I mean, that's just where I'm at. Like the first year, I mean, ultimately the first year I want to get this year as a doe, just so I have that practice. It, there wasn't a whole lot of sign. It was just like, Hey, here's the clearest route from that Island to this field. Mm-hmm. This is, so I'm just going to, I'm going to wait this out. It's too late in the afternoon to backtrack mm-hmm. to the North end. And so I sat there and sat there, and um, all I ended up seeing was uh, some squirrels, some mice, chipmunks, and a fox. Did you smoke the coyote. fox? And a coyote. No, oh. like he came cruising in too fast for me. Dude, dude. got to so, whack him. He didn't even see me there, so that was kind of cool. Nice. Um, but I, So I ended up sitting there and didn't see anything. <sighs> uh, yeah, super disappointed. And I think today I went back and, and kind of looked over my notes and all my markings that I dropped on Onyx and I was just really kicking myself for not realizing, Hey, we're seeing actually a lot of really good sign here. Like uh-huh. heavy the oaks trail. In yeah. The oaks, yeah. Yeah. He- oaks and heavy trail use over. I mean, it was a hot day too for September. It was yeah. like, I was next to water they're more than likely going to want to come for water. Why did I not stay where I was seeing this heavy, heavy sign? Um, so do, so, so for, if, go ahead, Seth. So when, so when you got to your, your final destination there, yeah. um, were you still like into the wind? Like, cause you were walking and you, you had to go through a bunch of, a bunch of different stuff yeah. or whatever, mm-hmm. but yeah. By the by, the time you got set up, was the wind coming from where you walked, or was it coming from where you were? If you continued on, um, where that would be. The the wind ultimately, yeah, didn't really change a whole lot, uh, regardless of the position I was sitting. I was it was pretty much in line. It was either where I was sitting, I could have gone directly north and basically sat in the same area. So the wind direction didn't really matter and plus the wind was so low and so minimal yesterday where i was at um i wasn't really worried about that i think the thing that i was kicking myself on on was not realizing the the high potential of what i had found in that north area it's the the versus like my my, drew you in yeah my 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 goal was hey i'm going to check this out but ultimately i'm going to work my way south and hit this area so you almost you know how we talk about not getting married to a spot you were like pre-married pre-married you were were, uh what's the what do they call that when someone uh sets you up for Uh, arranged you were an arranged arranged marriage for that back that back corner yeah 
instead of just, <laughs> so after especially after looking over everything this morning on it like, so i was no! just like oh why you idiot like <laughs> you had this you had such good sign and trails and act potential activity especially given the heat and there's a water source you and see you actually see deer and you're like nope i gotta go back to that corner <laughs> I didn't see deer. I didn't, as far as I could tell, I didn't spook anything, but I can only see like 10 feet ahead of me. So, yeah. Um, I think like the most highly underrated, maybe it's not anymore, I guess from what I've always known, I think the most underrated thing is like a water source or a pond. I, I just remember growing up and never being like, Oh, is there any ponds around or is there like, you know what I mean? There's yeah. huge blocks of timber and you know, there's some agriculture here and there, very few where we hunted. Yep. Um, so if I would have thought to hunt water sources, I think I would have done a lot better. See, because, that's where, that's I mean, where I struggle around here. Those are thousands of acres yeah. and they only have a couple spots and deer need water. Yep. Here, and, you know? and I think that's what, that was one of the big reasons I was kicking myself was like, I saw some, I mean, heavy, heavy trails coming down into water. And it was hot yesterday for September. I mean, we're talking oh. 70 degrees. I'm like, why did I not stay there? Why? Yep. Why? But, like, that's what I wonder, too. Like, I don't know, like, how relative it is for deer. Like, 70 degrees, like, I'm like, nah, it's not that hot. Like, where it's like, well, oh, I, was hot. I need water. Yeah. I, was hot. I was sweating like a dog. <laughs> oh, well, and it's no matter whether it's hot or cold, they need water. Yeah. You know? Like, they can get it out of a lot of their food, but, I mean, deer, they are very intentional about getting water well, every day. And that's, but that's possible. where I struggle around here, like, trying to balance that, because it's, like, literally everywhere I go, there's, like, infinite amount of water around here. It's not like, yeah, it's, I mean, true. I mean, yeah. literally everywhere I'm at, I'm like, oh, walking like through elk, a swamp, I'm like walking elk. through this, like, yeah. Well, yeah, crossing a stream. Just, uh, it's like, how hard is it to get water hmm. around here for like from yeah. the areas I'm at, I guess. Not like out west where they're like, where's the water holes? Yeah, literally water so far holes. and few between. Yeah. yeah. We're like, where's, where isn't there water? Where's the high ground that they're sleeping on? Yeah, it looks <laughs> like there's like a million, like a buffalo <laughs> trail of, uh, of animals coming to one water yeah. source. So, so that's where I have a hard time, like how much to, how much weight to put yeah. in that around here, just with the, at least where yeah. I'm around, I'm at. Oh, yeah. so, Situational, so, absolutely. Like, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna You're send. You're not gonna hunt the same way where there's no water and you know where there's abundance of water. You're right. Not yeah. Not gonna value it the same. And that's yeah. just. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'll send you the the area that I was at yesterday, Seth, and um. We can all face palm yeah, together. Yeah, we'll face oh, palm together. Oh, you painted that picture pretty clear. Well, no, 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 no. I it gets even worse <laughs> when you visually see it because yeah, I'll just show you tomorrow because there's this oh, natural yeah. like funnel Sorry area. I'm like, why? Really? Why did I not? Oh. You're it like, was painful today to reanalyze analyze what I did and realize how but stupid I was. But you'll remember it. Like that's a huge thing is when when you yep. go through when you when you walk that far and when you get to the, your final destination and it stinks and you're thinking <laughs> back. Well, it's it's one of those things that's memorable that you'll go next time I see that or next time I. You know, I happen on that. Yeah. I'm going to stop. Yeah. Well, and like, and also like a lot of things, I think, especially early on for hunters, I know I do it still where it's like, how much sign is enough sign to stop? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you don't have a bunch of experiences of where, whether you passed it up mm -hmm. and then realized, or you stopped on it and it wasn't enough. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you don't know without actually running into it and kind of starting to quantify and, what you're seeing and, and being able to compare it against other experiences. And I think ultimately that's kind of what I realize right now with where I'm at, what I'm learning is, I mean, it's such a, the, the growth curve, yeah. You could say is is so great right now that I'm just I'm just taking this all in and just really learning it. because ultimately like where I was from yesterday to a year ago I I wouldn't have been in I don't know where I would have been a yeah. year ago I had no clue a year ago at least now I have a clue and I can target these areas and now I'm just kind of learning to be able to recognize yeah like oh this is actually a really good area based off the sign compared to why waste traveling all that distance for a maybe versus with like, no, this is solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, that's, that. which is, yeah. I've, way, way. I actually feel like I can go in the woods and I have a clue of what I'm doing and what I'm looking for. Yeah. No, it's just a matter of putting it well, all together. And like right now it feels like a huge missed opportunity, but then also like you can look at it and gain a bunch of insight for moving forward, whether it's that particular area or, different areas that you haven't been to yet. So yeah. ultimately there's value in it, which is great. 
I think too, like with all three of us, I think that, um, and I wish I would have known this a long time ago, but every time you go out to a stand or to set a stand, it's like you're scouting. My mentality when I was younger, it was I'd go out and I'd pre-set a stand and I'd just walk out there, you know? Mm. And now it's like every hunting trip or every hunt is just a big scouting mission. And then if you, if you end up where you can kill a deer, great. If not, it's like you're trying to gather information every time you go out yeah. as opposed to I have a destination. That's where I'm always going to end up. And I hope something comes to where my destination is instead of like creating destinations based off of what you're seeing going in or coming out, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I'm hoping actually tomorrow night I'm going to go out after work into this area where I put up a truck and that have had deer come in, uh, going from uh, private to, or public to a private land field. And my, I mean, ultimately I'm hoping that a, a doe comes walking in under 30 and I can get it. But it's kind of nice knowing that I can go into this area tomorrow night and that part of it too is like, well, even if I don't kill anything, my goal is also to see what is moving and what's going on around there. Um, and just be able to start, yeah, observing and, and seeing observation as just as important or vital, um, and successful to hunting and growing as a hunter. So but, pretty- speaking of growing as a hunter, I, I gotta say this. Um, something totally different for me this year. Um, that's been cool. Maybe I'm growing as a hunter or as a human being. (laughs) It's like, you know, we can all, we can all control whatever it is we can control. And the things outside of your control, you can't, um, put so like, say if your, your stand clinks together, boom, you know, you get to a tree, you're like trying to open your stand all quiet and, (laughs) and now you're all bent out of shape, right? Like Emily and I, we walked out to a spot um, the other day, and like, I I think I told her to hold the stand, and the thing went like, clink or something. <laughs> did. And you punched her and in the like, face. Oh, dude, after I beat her up, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she goes, so bad. And she's like, oh, like, oh, sorry. And I'm, I just am. I'm like, you, you know what? Let's we head back. Don't let's leave. We do these things. <laughs> like the first thing in my head used to be as oh all the deer are gone or oh that ruined it or oh just like this uneasy irritated oh. whatever you know what i mean yep yep but like this year i kind of got this this thing where it, you know what hunting's supposed to be fun hunting's supposed to be an adventure when what? like you go yes. out what you what you can have a this great is new time. huh dude you can have a good time not killing a deer and putting like all sorts of pressure on yourself you can go out and try to enjoy yourself and if you don't kill a deer you don't kill a deer you know and i think i think before even with like getting out the door and getting to the spot and getting in the stand and like everything was like gotta do this gotta do this gotta do this and if anything like is a hiccup along the way it's just like it puts this huge damper on it you and it's throw like, your hands up in the air and what is no, life like, control what you can control and thinking like the, my biggest bow buck i left my boots at home drove home came back 45 minutes probably after shooting light walked in because i had to grab my bow sat my stand and shot my biggest bow kill you know and like i'm looking at it and like having a terrible attitude or like being frustrated it just adds nothing it solves nothing you know dude there's something that oh. uh that is always it's been sticking with me lately and it's uh event plus reaction equals your outcome and so Ooh, the event deep. the event you don't have any control over the events that will happen and then the only thing you do have control over is your reaction Man. and that's really going to determine what your outcome is cuz i mean like you're saying exactly is when there's something that is frustrating that happens and then you let it impact you like in that way where now you've got a negative attitude, just like realizing, Oh, what is that actually adding to my hunt? What is that actually adding to anything that's going on here? It's just taking away. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, you're losing good. You're losing energy in a direction that's not actually adding to your experience. So I totally agree. I'm with you. Yeah. it, It really like, what does it produce? If this is really supposed to be fun, like, 
what does it produce? If you're not having fun because you're you so avidly want to have fun, it's like, what? Am I crazy? <laughs> like, that's what it is. You're literally <laughs> having a bad attitude like, about something yeah. you're supposed to be having fun doing. So now you've created a not fun environment for something you're supposed to be out enjoying. I, it, it, like, just, it like reminds you know, me of being in the car. Out. <laughs> it, no, my, it, it reminds me of, it reminds me of being in the car with like all the kids who's like we're all gonna go out we're gonna go to the playground we're gonna have fun and no one's gonna want like you just like are set <laughs> this is gonna be fun oh, oh man that. that's like, yeah so yeah. so speaking of fun how was your weekend your your opening dude game? okay I, it was a whirlwind, to say the least. I'm going to pull a Seth here, and I'm going to go back to the scouting. Okay, is that fair? Ooh, the scouting. All right, yeah, that was good for you. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, you. Uh, so I was, I was, gosh, I don't even know where to, this is. All right, so there's this area that last year I looked at, and I had left a camera there late season because I was just kind of like one of those, like I'm going to just go in there, scout, and kind of hunt while I go. And just check it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I went back there and I was posting stuff on Instagram because I'm a genius and I get all this good intel from a buddy who hunts the area. His friend is his family's been hunting that area for like 10, 15 years, but not in the side of so it. So you're a thief. Not in the side of it's public. So no, uh, but <laughs> it's uh, I'm on the side that they don't hunt at all. And I picked up a really nice eight pointer on camera and. Um, and so I was like, oh, cool. You know, I'll probably check out that area next year before the season starts. So as you guys saw, I know you two at least saw, um, but I put it on Instagram. It was like I went out and it was a rainy day and I just kind of made this big circle. And um, I knew there was pressure on the west side. And I came in from the east and kind of made this, uh, followed this ridge line around um, kind of the east side heading west. And I saw pressure on the east side as well as the west. So I was like, oh, well, I'm in. And I was kind of planning on setting up in the middle of these areas. I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm just not going to. I'm not. I don't want to be in all this, dra- like, <laughs> this drama. This drama is what I feel drama. like. I don't want to be drama. around. That's. I was just like, I don't want to be in between all these people and like having to worry about other people's movements impacting my hunt. I'm like, whatever. I'm out of here. So I just like cut straight back to the road. And I might way back Plus to the I find a huge buck. I mean, then maybe I'll <laughs> Yeah. So I so mean, I, on principle, I'm out of here though. <laughs> so I was so I was headed back to the road and I'm just like pushing through all this crap. I find two stands on my way back. I'm like, yep, I'm not hunting here. Oh, and man. uh and I go and and I'm I'm getting like I'm literally probably I think it was like 150 or 200 feet from the road, and there's just this out of nowhere, like this big open area and I mean, big, it's probably like 40 yards long and 20 yards wide on the side of this hill where it's just really open. Massive. So further than Dusty can shoot. So, I mean, a real, a real Midwest glassing point, glassing knob. Is that a (laughs) a a challenge? challenge? Is that a challenge? So let's go. Do it. Does the tread guy have to out? out Oh my gosh. Anyhow. (laughs) We'll not. talk about this later. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get one for you. Self pro. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Go, Ethan. I'm going. I'm moving Go. forward. Okay. So, so I'm on my way back, and I find this massive open area, <laughs> like 400 square feet. Uh, no, but I find this open area. Size of my living room. <laughs> <laughs> so bad so i was like all right i had a camera with me because i was planning on leaving out there and i'm like you know what okay i'm 200 feet from the road i'm just gonna throw this camera up and i'm gonna make a mock scrape just for the heck of it never done it and i was like all right i'm just gonna like tear up this ground throw the camera up and whatever happens happens because i'm like the worst case scenario i can pick the camera up in two weeks in like 20 minutes right because it's pretty close to my house right and we get like three or four days out from hunting season and I'm like, okay, well I kind of want my camera so I can like leave it somewhere. If I find it, if I find something that I was hunting and scouting and I want to get more Intel and I'm like, and I'm not going to hunt that area anyway. So I go and I get the camera and I pull the card and there's like this nine point buck, which is the biggest I buck. I knew to- I was going to hunt this area. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the picture and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I'm going to hunt this area. Aren't I? <laughs> And, and, uh, <laughs> so someone just got married, dude, it gets, it gets worse. So, dun, 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 dun. so because I really, do, there's so many areas, like I'm, 
I don't know. Like with this podcast and everything, like I'm like, let's just, I don't care sharing everything and like putting it out there. And if someone happens to know this deer or this area, like I'm not too broken up about it, I guess. And for three listeners, I mean, that's, that's going to be pretty good odds if three people are listening. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Self-deprecation. It's the best. Uh, (laughs) So we need to talk after the podcast. We think, but go on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, I posted this picture of this buck and I'm like, well, uh, I guess my plans are changing based on this. And so I started looking at the area. Like I had everyone else was like mine too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I was like, here's the coordinates. All of our plans are changing. (laughs) And, uh, and so let's go, <laughs> it's a group hunt, a party hunt. And, uh, Minotaur, unite. <laughs> so, so I'm talking to, I start talking to Seth. <laughs> it's just so bad. Okay. So I start talking to Seth and I'm looking at the area and first thing out of Seth's mouth is like, I bet they're baiting. <laughs> Cause there's, there was like 280 photos in like 15 days of these deer coming through this area Jeez. for like no obvious reason. Like as far as terrain goes, and no obvious reason to you. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah then to, to me, right. But the I had, voice of wisdom yeah. speaks. So I had I had Seth come up and he goes, I bet they're baiting in that area somewhere, right? And then I had two other people who goes, Someone sent me pictures of like, hey, like they weren't fans of the people who had these pictures on camera, but they're like, Hey, I think so and so has the same oh, pictures man. of that buck on there. Sends me three photos. I'm like, son of a it's the same <laughs> buck. Like I was like, okay. Um, and then another buddy texts me. He's like, Oh, Hey, there's like a huge illegal box. I don't know, he might have not said illegal at the time. Cause he thought it was on their property on the private land. Um, he's like, I'm pretty sure there's a huge box blind right back there. And I, I think they bait. And I was like, "Alrighty then. So now I got all this information about the area coming in. And for me, it went from like, you know, this not unadulterated area where it was like untouched to undefiled. <laughs> <laughs> to like high high to the low low yes exactly i'm like i don't like i don't even want to be here and it's the biggest buck i have on camera so far so i had some real inner turmoil and i kind of came to this gr- isn't organic <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go check if this corn's gmo free feel like nature <laughs> yeah so so okay so we're like literally two or three days out from hunting season and uh and we're looking at the information I have. We have, you know, a guy who's coming in from the east, which I found his stand earlier. I was like, okay. I found out he motors in on a boat. So I'm like, okay. Oh, nice. Hopefully he'll push, you know, he'll push deer my way because I'll be to the west of him. And then also I, so I went, Seth and I were talking and kind of like I started to change the way I was going to hunt it where it's like I'm basing this on pressure around me because mm-hmm. it's submetro, So it's got to be bow, I'd hope. Yo. But it's got to be bow because we're in sub metro area, and so I started to like think of it in the way of like, all right, what are they going to do? What time are they going to do it? How do I put myself in a position to capitalize on on their timing, their mistakes, whatever it might be? And so uh, in talking with Seth, it was like, all right, well at this point, just go put out a stand because you, I have a climber that I was going to use, and it's like there's no way you're going to sneak in there quietly, find a tree and shimmy up that, you know, opener morning quiet enough to where you're set up for success. Yeah. And so I go out there. I had picked a tree, like even on my Instagram video, I'm like, yeah, I think if I was going to sit somewhere, it'd be that tree right there. And I went out, I get to the tree and I'm thinking this box blind is like a hundred plus yards away. I start shimmying up the tree. I get like 15, 20 feet up. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this is looking good. And I look straight behind the tree and I'm like, you've got there to be kidding me. There's this elevated cabin. I mean, box Son blind of a gun dude. And it's on public land, which makes it even more. It irks me even more. I know the feeling. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like opening morning morning. If I sat here, they'd be looking at my back all morning. <laughs> I'm like, I could just see someone coming out and be like, Oh, you can't be over here. We're baiting these deer and there are You're deer. The ultimate revenge, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want my opening morning to be filled with that. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So, I'm so then I disappointed so, that you didn't do what I suggested. Yeah. You, well, I was gone by that time. Cause I told you about it the next day or whatever. That's true. And so, which I'm, my suggestion fr- was send bottle rockets. In yeah. <laughs> so I'm like frantically like, what do I do now? And I, I was like, oh, Seth, what do we, what do I do? 
And he's just like, and he just drops him. He's like, find the heaviest. He's like, find the heaviest trail set up on it and just call it good. And I'm like, all right. So I started to go over to this area and I put the stand up there and I'm like, okay, this will be it for opening morning. And I'm, yeah, I was a day, day and I was a two days out from the opener. So I put the stand off this like 50 or 60 yards away from it. Opening morning comes along and, uh, and I go out there, get in there quiet. I shimmy up the stand. I'm sitting in the stand for like an hour before daylight sitting in there. And just when daylight starts to come around about six Oh five, whatever was in my gut or heart, I don't know at this point, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm going, I'm out of the game right now. I'm like, I don't feel like this is where I need to be. Like I, I was just like, this isn't right. Like this isn't the spot to be. And so at daybreak, I go back down, leave the stand there. I get on the ground. I go back to the opening. I tuck under a tree and then I start sitting there for the rest of the, for, you know, a few hours. And, um, and so and like, but the thing is, it was funny about it. Like, cause we were earlier, we were talking about like doing the hunt that you want to do. And like, that is something you're like, you're all in on, not like what you should do, so to speak yep. in quotations, but like what you actually would make a good hunt for you. And I went down uh, on the ground against all the things that I'm supposed to do. And, and uh, I set up in this grass that was about a little over knee high and I'm sitting in it. So I was pretty low. And then I had a uh, nice pine tree kind of right above me. And so if there was, and I sat right where that, oh, that huge opening was, you know, that yeah. glassing knob we talked about where you can see 20, 30 yards. And, uh, <laughs> And so I sat there and I was like, I, I felt, I just felt, first of all, I felt like way more in the game. I was like, yeah, now we're talking and Welcome to the ground. Hunting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, and, sure. <laughs> yeah. So I put on like six pounds of face. So, so I put on like six, six pounds of face paint. I was in it. It was legit. And, uh, just <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the wind was blowing from right to left on me. And I knew the deer were coming in, in from this bait pile at from between right like, to left. No, straight ahead. They were coming oh, straight ahead. My gut told me they'd be coming off the bait pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I just had the intuition. Um, and uh, and so I'm sitting in this area, and What's the smell of corn. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not organic. Yeah. What are you feeding these deer? I'm not gonna eat this deer hasn't been eating. <laughs> Did you spray this corn? Pesticide. Oh, oh God. man. I'm going to keep going. Um, and so. Hey, if you don't want interruptions, don't make it 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday. We started this podcast on oh, Monday. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so, so the, the, anyway, after like an hour and a half, um, a, a four point buck starts walking in, and he walks out about 20 yards straight ahead of me. And like, for me, the only thing, like I decided before the, like right before the season started, I'm like, I just need to like capitalize on opportunities. And about the only thing that I won't shoot is like a four point or like a real small six point at this point, a lot of points anyway. Um, so basically two by two and a three by three. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. Now, now everyone from North Dakota, they're like, he passed on an eight pointer. A six point. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's a 12 point to us. Yeah. And so. So the buck came out um, straight in front of me and it was like wide open, straight like line to me. And it just kept eating and kind of moseying in my direction. It got to about probably the 15 or 13 yard mark and then kind of moseyed up to the left, which is where my wind was blowing. And he got within 10 yards before, and there's trees now obstructing the view of me. Um, But he got within about 10 yards of me and he started like sniffing the air, trying to figure out what was going on. Like you could for sure tell he was like, that's not normal. Sure. Um, All the GoPros he saw. It was not the GoPros he saw. Just like the flashy. Yeah. I had all the the beep sounds on and I had the red flashing light. I just kept yelling action. Call me Brooke. I just kept (laughs) action, action. (laughs) Let's go. Um, And so anyway, the, the deer was within 10 yards of me. And he finally uh, sniffed me out. He didn't, he never like saw me as far as like, okay. he didn't see me, <laughs> Justin, all right. <laughs> and, uh, and so he, he started, um, you know, snorting at me or whatever and, and uh, took off. And then he, yeah. for the next like 10, 15 minutes, he was just in the back of the woods doing the same thing. And I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to cross the road and start scouting. 
So I ended up going across the road, finding what I think is some really good buck bedding and some open area that I'll be checking out in the future. Nice. But that was and like. So will everyone else. Yeah, because I'm going <laughs> to put it on Instagram. We'll drop uh, a link to those coordinates <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We've said too much. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I just don't find like the like if someone has to go to that level to like be able to find any kind of animals. I just, I don't get, I don't know. I don't oh, know. man. Like, are there people they who are do. really that low? Yeah. I mean, I'm oh, sure there yeah. are. <laughs> oh, there is. I'll be there next week. Right? <laughs> oh, man. I heard there was a fork around here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's on. Odyssey tag and everything. Oh, man. So that, so that was my opener. Um, I did spook a couple deer when I was across the, the unknown road. Did you see them? I did, actually. You did? Ooh. Yeah, they were like 30 yards, and it was like... You're not at mine in a sex level nastiest, of not being able to spook deer. The nastiest, hairiest, like, underbrush ever. You need to learn how not to spook deer like Seth and I. Yeah, we're just, I'll do we're my... We're really good at that. Yeah, I'll do my best next For time. For various reasons reasons seth because he's good and i just don't see deer <laughs> so ultimately are you you're glad you went to the ground uh yes that was kind of like the main thing was like i just i enjoyed the hunt so much from there and i felt like i was actually in it and i followed my heart you guys i followed my heart followed your heart yeah. and so, so when you when, when are you getting a ghillie suit we Dude, I was one? I was looking at some, but I'm I'm thinking about just making my own too. I've got stuff you can make seems, one from. All right, I might have to. Right. I might have uh, to. Um, and then I did do an evening sit, which was hilarious because I am so out of shape. It's great. Yeah, we saw that. If, if yeah, yeah. Uh, that I was. say I saved it on our thing, so you okay. can watch it. You can watch our right. opening day hunts on there. Your super They're extensive great. one and my really They're short great. One. Yeah. So anyway, I uh, I took the long route into uh, another stand for the evening, and with the stand on my back, my backpack, and it was like up and down hills. It was brutal. It yeah. was brutal. <laughs> I was like, "There's if there's deer in here, they're not. They're not anymore." <laughs> yeah, I had people send me like, "You need an inhaler." <laughs> so it was great. Wow. Oh man. Not nice. Yeah. Did you leave your stand in there, or did you pack it out, or what? I may have left it in there, but I plan on moving it the next time I go in. You left your climber in there? Yeah, I did. Oh my god. What? You got a problem, dude? That's so illegal. Uh, no, it's not. Not during season in Wisconsin anymore. Okay. In well, season, you're that's good. That's because Wisconsin uh, is better. Because we have so many more bucks, it's so easy here. We yeah. won't. I'm go. still. Oh, I'm still god, salty. No. The first it's the thing pressure out of difference. Dusty's mouth. Well, no, Seth. Now out there, can you see more bucks than Wisconsin? Because I think it goes. Anyhow, North folks, Dakota, thank you for Wisconsin. tuning in to Venator Chronicles oh, wow. podcast. Okay. We've been uh, really going long, and uh, Dude, wow. You know what? I, I was a legitimate Dude, question. Oh, I just I was curious because you have experience in Wisconsin and North Dude, Dakota. I will. I will say. Like, I'm coming hunting with you next fall. Can I? Oh, dude, I need I need to get this off my chest too. Please, okay? please, oh, please, yes. so, please, and then, the then we'll deal. end here. You can come to you can come to North Dakota, and there are plenty of people out here that say they cannot find big bucks and they cannot find deer in general, hmm. and they can't get close enough to kill a deer. So it's so it's a cop out, is yeah. what you're saying. Is that well, what you're telling I mean, me, Seth? I know people. I know a guy who said, "Oh, I have no land to hunt, and uh, I have no place to hunt." <laughs> and I'm going, "I <laughs> there's so much public land out here, you know." You didn't tell him but, that though. You're like, "Yeah, I know well, it's tough. It's tough. There's no big bucks." <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're I like, know stay I home. I no, I, I do. I ultimately, I will. I will say this. I mean. The the pre the it takes work. That's what I've learned. It takes work to be able to go in and find it. The one thing I do know. Well, I I will say yeah, and I will say I mean it's like like with these eleven hunts that Emily and I have done, it has literally been I have worked every day since season. Mm -hmm. So it's literally been get off work, get home, get in the car, load up stuff pack up the kids, go drop her off, like that type of scenario. Commitment, you know? baby. That's like, what I'm talking about. No, I just like, dude, it, 
it is it's work but we love it you yep. know you know and i mean honestly i don't expect and i think i used to expect not everybody's going to be putting in like the time and effort like yeah i know i've got thousands of dollars in fuel in this <laughs> just this year thousands <laughs> of dollars in fuel i have hundreds of hours in my vehicle looking for deer you know i have tens of hours however many like out scouting like maybe a hundred I, yeah. I don't know i don't know what the number is but it's like the way that most people sit down and maybe watch tv in the evening you know or the way that everybody you go to the gym or you know the weight room or whatever those hobbies well that is like you know, it's like that's what we do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, what? Well, but it's deer hunting. It's deer hunting. And I yep. think that was a so, big shift for me just two months ago. For whatever reason, things really started clicking, and and it was also, um, I don't know why, but it was just like, oh wow, like I want to get out, and I want to like I'm gonna wake up early, and I hate waking up early because I work late. I'm gonna wake up early. I'm gonna go scout these areas. Like two months ago, I started actually investing time in the checking these areas out mm -hmm. with the, the basis of knowledge I had. And it was just like, Oh, I am the little bit of success that I've, I've found so far. was just like, Oh, okay. This is the route that I need to go to be able to have a successful hunting season is put in the work beforehand. And that that's been a huge, major radical shift yeah. in my thinking and my approach and my understanding of this whole hunting game. Well, I think that's what, like, even when we started this podcast, like for both of us, that was a big part of it was like, we were just used to that's where your stand is. Yeah. That's where the bait is. Yeah. Hopefully a deer walks by and it's like yeah. the amount of investment that it takes, which is like a labor of love. Cause it's super like it is, it is a lot of time, a lot of energy, um, all, and a lot of money. Um, but like the pursuit of it and being able to learn and challenge yourself and all of it has been what's, I mean, yeah. it's super rewarding obviously as you get into it. So, well, Dude, we, I think we've, we've, we've been going and we could probably keep going, but it's a, it's late. Our listeners are probably, their ears are probably bleeding. It's <laughs> <Gosh. laughs> not late for them. That's just yeah. Crazy. It's, I don't know what time it is That's for you if you're, as you're listening to this. Yeah. It's 12, 10 AM for us. So yes. we, we wanted to get, we, this again, has been a two day podcast yeah. effort. <laughs> we started <laughs> on Monday. We ended on Tuesday. <laughs> That's the level of commitment. No, um, but yeah, we really wanted to like, as the season goes on, we really do want to make it, um, as up to date and like keeping people posted as, as possible. So, yeah. um, this has been legit. Uh, I don't know when we're going to do our next one. Um, but hopefully we're going to two or three weeks. Yeah. Hopefully we, I think we might be, All drop right, boys. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we might be dropping our next one after our hunting trail. Yeah. We, Dustin and I have a long weekend yeah. hunting trip, which is going to be, it's spot like, it's, and stock, that's baby. all it is. It's, it's built around spot weekend? and stock. No, 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 no. In uh, two weeks. Yeah. Yep. October 4th. Two weeks. Nice. Yeah. So we're hoping to, uh, I mean, the whole thing is just based on spot and stock. It's an area where it's just wide open. Um, and I went there last year with the buddy and, uh, it's, it's like, yeah. I'm it's about as Western as you can get for, mid for Midwest. For, for, yeah. For Northern Wisconsin. <laughs> so we're going to make the most of it. We're going to go, we're going to pull a Seth here. Yeah. But, uh, we'll, we'll be keeping everybody posted, obviously like on Instagram or Facebook, you can follow along and then, um, we're hoping to have Seth on as much as we can throughout the season. Keep yes, his, his season official, unofficial, official third host, third host. Yeah. It's going to be legit. Oh, oh yeah. A lot of pressure, oh Seth. A lot of pressure. Don't let us down. Oh now. yeah. I'm feeling it. It's, uh, <laughs> better hurry up and get that big buck. Cause you're the only one that can do it. Yeah, that's right. Seth, all the pressure's on you. <laughs> so no, all right. I got to get my wife tagged out. Dude, yeah. yeah. Focus. That's, that's what matters. We right? need to get her on here. Yeah. That'd Once be she fun. gets tagged out. Let's get her on here. So yeah. what is it like being married to a maniac? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, I'm just dude, Man. she's probably got a little bit of the bug too, though. Oh, wow. I mean, she's a little bit. Yeah, she sat out in the rain the other day and just got poured on. Nice. And I was like, okay, nice. Well, it's nice. good. I mean, you gotta have. I feel like you gotta have a little, a little. A little you gotta have a touch of crazy. Just yep. a little bit of crazy in you. Just crazy enough to marry you. Yep. Well, that's something. Anyhow. So, yeah. Moving along. Right on. Seth. 
thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, dude, it's been good. Oh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> in a couple hours. Later, probably. probably. Yeah, exactly. I'll be like, okay, now that our podcast is out of the way, we got to figure out the next hunt. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, Are you hunting tomorrow? Somebody hunting tomorrow? I wish. I'm yeah, tomorrow I'm night. Emily or I is going out. I'm going out tomorrow night, so we'll be in touch. Yeah. Dude, Insta Live, guys. Insta, yeah, Insta Live. live. I don't have that reception. You got to do it. Well, then you got to find a new spot, man. Yeah. I'm just here. kidding. Hey, uh, we're going to have to have the cell phone video conversation next podcast, Ethan. <laughs> what? The what? Uh, hunting pollution what? that it is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Day. Yeah, we could spend another hour and a half on that, but we will we'll leave that for the mm. next the next time. Mm. So what do we have now then, Dusty, Seth? You'll love it. We have we have broadheads. What did you say, Seth, for the next podcast? Buck poop and broadheads. Buck, Buck poop broadheads and broadheads. And, and uh, hunting pollution. Digital something. Hunting digital pollution. Digital pollution. Digital pollution. I like that. Nice. Hey, hey guys, mobile hunting. Get it? Get it? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I see what you did. It's playing words. Oh man. Get it? Okay. Anyhow, now Ethan, we're really, we're really dragging this Ethan, out. where can people find where us at? Where can they find us? Where can they find <laughs> us, everyone? Well, where can they find us? Whatever you're listening to us on is where you can start. <laughs> okay, so if you're listening, go ahead and hey, hit that. You've already found us. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on square one. Make sure you hit subscribe, rate, review, and then go to Facebook or Instagram as well. Um, and then we're on like a host of yeah. different streaming and downloading. Um, apps that you can check out the podcast on if you're not already on it for most up-to-date activity please follow us on instagram and facebook as we'll be posting various videos of our time in the field yeah and And then we i left our highlights stuff and then i left our highlights in the instagram story thing so like people can check out our first hunts and how much of a epic success they were yeah (laughs) well on that note thank you for joining us to today tonight whenever you listen to this and we hope uh you enjoyed every single moment of it. And good luck to your guys' seasons and make sure to post on uh, how your season is going. Really. Hashtag VCP Nation. Oh, are we really starting that? We're going there. All right. Hey, Seth, make sure you do that when you're out in the field, okay? Make sure to hashtag it. <laughs> yes. I like Benet- the word Venator is a pretty cool word. Yeah. I don't know about VCP for me yet. Both. Right. You got to use both hashtags. Yeah, we'll see. All right, cool. Well, thanks right. for listening and uh, peace, peace out. Peace out.